Hello, our topic for today is interpreting octaves. You know what octaves means in vibrational astrology? It means you take a number and you double it. So for example, you take five vibration and you double it. What's the octave above five vibration? 10. Octave above 10 vibration? 20 vibration. 5, 10, 20, 40, 80, and so on. So you can start with any number and double. We call those octaves because when you double a vibration, it does not change the essential meaning of it. So I'm going to talk about the interpretation of octaves and higher vibrations, also some peculiar properties of midpoint structures. You can watch this video separate from the first five videos in a series of videos on harmonic charts. I made those first five videos back, I think it was five or six years ago. And I'm realizing from some questions that were sent to me that I need to add some additional information. So this is also a part six in that series. So you can watch this independently or as a continuation of the first five parts. So some of the things I'm going to deal with in this video is how do we interpret an aspect in the eight vibration chart differently from in the natal chart? That's an example of the things I'm going to discuss. Or suppose you have a five vibration aspect in your natal chart. What does five vibration aspect mean? It means 72 degree aspect, a one fifth, or a 144 degree aspect, that's two fifths, also known as the quintile and biquintile. Suppose you have one of those aspects, a one fifth or two fifths aspect with only a 10 minute orb. So is that aspect? That one-fifth or two-fifths aspect, is it really acting like a 10 vibration, a 15 vibration, 20, 25, 30, 35? Is it acting in those vibrations as well? How do we interpret it? I want to make that clear because we have some ideas that we've put out about it, but I want to go over this and make it clear. And also there are some differences between the way midpoint structures work when you go up octaves as opposed to aspects and some peculiar things about midpoint structures. So we're going to review some things here. First, we're going to start off reviewing, and then we're going to get a little more specific about some things that were not explained clearly before, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as a few new points that have not been made. So to review some fundamentals, and, and if you're having trouble following these fundamentals, then watch, watch the first five videos in this series. Okay. Let's review. On the left, we have the birth chart for the early rock and roll singer and songwriter writer Buddy Holly. And Buddy Holly happens to have Venus and Jupiter in the one-fifth aspect very tightly. And both Venus and Jupiter are in two-fifths aspect to Uranus. So you see that there with Uranus down near the bottom of the chart. And also Uranus is in seven-twentieths aspect to Sun, and also Venus is in 120th aspect to Neptune. I talk about this in the other videos, but I'm just reviewing to, to refresh our minds, get ourselves in the mode of thinking about this, because we're going to add to this. So what do these aspects look like in the five vibration chart? If you've watched those videos or, if you, or you've learned about vibrational astrology or harmonic astrology elsewhere, it should be obvious. On the right side is this five vibration chart. For no particular reason, it's a different wheel style. You don't have to, that doesn't you know mean anything. But what happens to Venus, uh, what is it? Venus, Jupiter, and Uranus, of course, they're conjunct. And there they are. They happen to be in Libra at 16, 18, and 21 degrees. I say, of course, again, if that's not clear to you, you need to watch the earlier videos in this series. And the 20 vibration aspects, the Sun, uh, 7 20th Uranus, and the Venus, 1 20th, Neptune, they have the same denominator. What happens to them? 20 equals 5 times 4. So we see the Sun at 15 Libra, tightly square Uranus at 16 Libra. We see Neptune at 22 Libra, tightly square the Venus at, uh, what did I say? Neptune at 22 Cancer, square Venus at 21 Libra. And this is a spreading configuration of two planets, square three planets, but not all of them are within orb. We call that a spreading pattern. Also, another thing that gets involved is Mars is opposition, at least two or more of the planets here. So Mars gets involved with some of them when some planets get involved with some of the planets, but not all of the planets. We call that a spreading pattern. So it's a very large spreading pattern. 
that describes exactly Buddy Holly's music, which I talk about elsewhere. We don't need to go into all that, but that we believe is why Buddy Holly is Buddy Holly. So this is so exciting because we think these vibrations describe the essential quality and behavior and personality of the person. Now, also to review, just to get us in the flow of this, before I start adding some new things, what are the orbs? The orb in the natal chart. Of course, the natal chart is the only real chart. The orb of an aspect is you simply take the denominator, also known as the frequency vibration, also known as the harmonic. Take the denominator. We divide it into 16. So the orb for a one-fifth aspect, you should all know this. It's going to be 5 into 16, which equals 3 and a fifth. And if you convert that to degrees and minutes, it's 3 degrees, 12 minutes. Now, if you take that five vibration aspect and you look at it in a five vibration chart, it turns into a conjunction. Everything is multiplied by five and the orb, it becomes 16 degrees in the five vibration chart. So the orb of conjunctions in any vibrational chart is 16 degrees. This is all explained in the previous videos. I'm just reviewing and if you're familiar with this, this should all make sense to you. If it's new to you, I might be going too fast and overwhelming you. You need to go back and go through it more slowly with the other videos. Um, so as you know, a vibrational chart is like a magnification of the chart and it keeps everything proportional. So the orb for conjunctions in any vibrational chart is 16 degrees. Okay, so everything in a five vibration chart is multiplied by is multiplied five times. We say everything, I mean all the angular distances between all planets in a seven vibration chart, all the angular distances are multiplied by seven, um, and so on. Okay, so this is just to review, uh, to be clear about this, because we're going to head on to some new ideas. And of course, remember that a vibrational chart makes it easier for us to see the aspects in the natal chart and to see also the related aspects because a 15 vibration aspect in the natal chart, what does it look like in the five vibration? 15 is five times three. It's a trine. What does it mean? It means a trine in five, a soft kind of five. So the vibrational chart is really uh, wonderful for visualizing. And also just to review this, I've got four vibrations here shown in the upper left is a five vibration, upper right seven, lower left nine. And in the lower right, I'm showing the standard aspects used in astrology, along with what they call some of the minor aspects. But let's start with the one in the upper left corner, the five vibration. If we start on the left side and we go around, we've got one fifth and then the two fifths aspects. And of course, going up an octave means you've doubled, which means you've gone halfway in between. So the one tenth and three tenths aspects are the aspects we get when we go up one octave from the five vibration. And the orb of those 10 vibration aspects is going to be t um, 10 divided into 16. It'll be half of the orb of the five vibration aspects. And similarly, on the upper right, you've got in, in black the octaves of seven. The next octave up would be 14. And that means you've taken each of these sevenths and you've cut them in half. And you end up with a 1 14th 3 fourteenths and 5 fourteenths. That's the next, oc next octave. Of course, we can go up to 28, and then we take each of these fourteenths, we divide them in half, and we get the 28ths. And in the lower left, same idea for 9 vibration. Notice that um, the 3 ninths aspect over here is not labeled, because 3 ninths reduces to 1 third, which is the trine. But we see that with 18 we happen to get four new aspects. 1 18th, 3 18th, 5 18th, 7 18th. Sometimes an aspect will reduce to a lower fraction, and then it's really not that vibration. A 3 9th is not really a 1 3rd aspect, except under certain conditions, which I'm going to review. That's one of the things we're going to review. But in itself, 
a one-third aspect just by itself, out of context, is not a nine vibration. But in some cases, a trine will act as a nine vibration. I will talk about that later in this video. That's one of the points we want to make. What those conditions are that would allow, for example, a trine to act as a three-ninths. It may sound odd, but sometimes a one-third is not three-ninths, and sometimes it is. And there's something that activates the nine quality in the three. It's very simple, and I'll talk about it soon. And in the lower right, we have in green the softer aspects or multiples of 12. In red, we have the hard aspects. And in black, we've taken the eighths and gone up the octave to the 16th, and we've got the 1 16th, 3, 5 16th, 7 16th. And of course, you can go up octaves forever. You can go to 30 seconds and 60 fourths and just keep dividing in half. Okay, that's all stuff you're already familiar with. I'm just reviewing quickly. And another point I want to review, so this video is also a good review to make sure you're familiar with all these ideas, is what happens when you create a vibrational chart that's one octave higher. What happens to the aspects? You should all know this, but here on the left is the singer-songwriter Donovan from the early 60s and 70s and so on. Uh, he's still alive and still going, but anyway, he was popular back in the 60s and 70s, um, or that's when he was, I guess, most popular. Anyway, there's his chart uh, on the left. He was born in 1946. On the right is the second vibration chart. We don't usually analyze the, the two vibration chart in uh, vibrational astrology, but for teaching purposes, let's look at what happens to the aspects. You should all know this. So, for example, this is like a quiz. What happens to the uh, Venus square moon in his birth chart? So there's the moon at 12 Virgo, Venus at 13 Gemini. They're square. You go up an octave and the aspect goes down an octave. So the square turns into an opposition. So I've listed them all here. You can pause this video and confirm all of this if, you're, if you need practice with it. But the Venus square moon... When you go up, the chart goes up one octave from natal. You can think of natal as one vibration. You double it to two vibration, and the aspects go down an octave. So as the chart goes up an octave, the aspects go down an octave. And the orbs will become twice as big, and the orb for that aspect, like an opposition versus a square, an opposition has twice the orb of a square. So the orb is twice as big, the allowable orb and the actual orb is twice as big. Everything remains perfectly proportional. Now, the only thing that's interesting here or different is what happens when you get to a conjunction. A conjunction cannot go down. It's the base. It's as low as you can get. And all that happens to a conjunction is it remains a conjunction with an orb twice as big. And so um, Donovan has Venus conjunct Uranus with almost a three-degree orb. And there it is in the two vibration chart with exactly twice as big an orb. As you double and double and double, the orb gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It doubles until eventually it goes above 16 degrees and then it's completely out of orb. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay, so this is a review to make sure you, you know, one of the purposes of this particular video is to review some ideas. Then I'll introduce some new ideas and new perspectives. And this is one of the things I want to emphasize is in the upper left corner is the strength of an aspect, That's specifically the strength of a conjunction. So this is a graph showing the strength of a conjunction. When a conjunction has no orb, it's at full strength. And we can imagine it curves up like that. Maybe it just goes up straight. We don't really know, like a triangle. But, you know, a lot of things in nature have this curvy kind of shape what we call a normal curve. Maybe it goes up like that. There's not a huge difference between a straight line going up and a curvy line. So that, that's not the critical issue in vibrational astrology. The critical issue is that when an aspect is exact, it's at full strength. When that conjunction is out here at a 16 degree orb, 16 degrees on either side, either 16 degrees you know, before the conjunction or after, it's reached to zero. So that's the image of the strength. Now, what happens in, when the orb is within two degrees? It's like you have a little 
normal curve thing going on within two degrees, that is the orb for eight vibration, right? Because eight vibration, the allowable orb is one eighth. So again, I'm reviewing and I'm going to, you know, refine our understanding of how we interpret this in a moment. But, but my point here is that if you have a conjunction in your birth chart with a two degree orb or less, is it eight vibration as well? Answer, yes, it is. It is. It's, it has the intensity of eight vibration because it's within two degrees. If it's within a one degree orb, it has the intensity of the next octave, 16 vibration. And the higher the octave, the more internal it is. So we have this conclusion. If you have a conjunction in your birth chart and the orb is large, it's more in your demeanor and your outer expression, but it doesn't dig deep into the heart and soul of you. When you have a conjunction and the orb is small, it's picking up the intensity of the higher vibration. Intensity meaning it digs deep into your thoughts and feelings. So those aspects with small orbs, they don't just float around on the exterior part of you in the way you express yourself, your demeanor. They dig into the heart and soul of how you think and feel. So here's some examples of an aspect that's within a 16 degree orb. It's in the first vibration. It just means the planets are loosely identified with each other. So if you have two planets that are conjunct and they have like a 12 degree orb, 13 degree orb, you know, we don't even pay attention to that in vibrational astrology because it's so minor. There is a connection, however. We don't interpret it because we don't want to get information overload. But planets out to a 16 degree orb do have some connectedness. And when you're in a higher vibrational chart, we consider them a little bit more than we do in the birth chart. So if it's within an eight degree orb, you have two planets conjunct with an eight degree orb, it picks up the intensity of that polarity, that sense of an other, of a me and you. These are like basic primary existential facts. One, you exist. Two, you exist with an outer world. Four, you exist with motivation and trying to overcome things, trying to overcome challenges, meeting challenges, facing challenges. And that's what happens when the orb is within four degrees. If you have planets conjunct within a four degree orb, they're picking up the intensity of a squareness, of challenge. That planetary combination is more motivating when it picks up, when it's within eight vibration, means two degrees. It means that not only are those two planets challenging for you and motivating, you want to do something about them, they're digging in and becoming important. It's not just something you have to do because of the nature, like you have to eat, you need shelter. They become more meaningful in their own right, personally meaningful. And when they get down to a one degree orb, when you have a conjunction within a one degree orb, it's within 16 vibration. That aspect is now essential. It's like essential for you. It's something that's so meaningful and it's personal, highly personal, highly specific, and highly charged. And then as you go to higher and higher vibrations, if you have a conjunction within a half a degree orb, Remember, we did divide 16 in, into the aspect. So if you're down to a half a degree orb, you're within the power of a 32 vibration. Because 16 divided by 32 is one half. The orb for 32 vibration is a half a degree. When you have a conjunction within a half a degree, now not only is it essential, but something special can happen with those planets. Something extreme. It could be like a gift or some extreme potential is now possible. And when you get down to one fourth of a degree, 64 or even less, it becomes more and more like searing, like cutting into your thoughts and your feelings and you get exceptional potential. 
You, you also develop a never-ending interest in those planets. When the orb is small, it's so fundamental to how you think and feel that you never get tired of it. That's, people often choose that for their career. So in normal astrology, people will say, oh, well, you look at the 10th house for a career. Well, in a vague sense, that may be true, but really, what's really going to happen is those aspects that are reaching into 64 vibration, 128 vibration, you never tire of them. You always are excited about them. They always mean something to you. There's always another layer of the onion to peel away that you never lose interest in. These are the things that are really the most highly charged for you. Okay. Um, now, what if you have two planets that are 1 16th in a 1 16th aspect or a 3 16th aspect? They're not conjunct. Well, they have that inner power of 16, but they don't externalize as easily. Now, the fact they don't externalize as easily as a conjunction or an opposition or square. In other words, what's the difference between a 1 16th aspect? Suppose in your birth chart, you have two planets that are 1 16th of a circle, and there's 22 and a half degrees. What does it mean? It means that it's very, very meaningful to the way you think and feel. It's not as apparent externally, but it will show up in if you, if you write, you will write about those 16 vibration aspects. If you paint, you will paint them. It's not that they don't appear at all. They just appear in your thoughts and your feelings in your heart and soul. And they do get expressed in those personal direct ways. But you don't, you don't exhibit it. It's not in your personality and your style. It's not going to affect whether you're, uh, you know, kind of a joyful, gregarious person, that sort of thing. It's more personal and deep. And it affects your real talent, but it doesn't get communicated as well. That's why if you have a low vibration aspect, like a conjunction or opposition, and the orb is tight, you've got it all. It's in your heart and soul, and it's easily brought out and expressed and shared. Because that easily expressed and shared and, and just in your mood, in your disposition, in your way of being, those are the lower vibration aspects. So if you have a low vibration aspect with a large orb, it's more peripheral. If you have a high vibration aspect, like a 32 vibration aspect, and it's not a low vibration, like it's a 132nd aspect or a 532nd, it's the way you think and feel. It's in a way more important, but it's not as easily observable. And when it's both, like a conjunction, opposition square, a, a low vibration and the orb is small, it's deep in your heart and it's, it's, it's clearly visible and expressed as well. So on this slide, I have some additional notes that repeats exactly what I just said. Uh, let me read the last paragraph just to repeat this. Vibrations of 16 and higher are what we think and feel deeply about. We are inclined to write, paint, plan, and develop goals based on this aspect. I mean, if you paint, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're a painter, you're going to paint about it. If you're a writer, you will write about those things with small orbs because you're writing about something that's important to you. I mean, normal writing, like if you're writing a book or something, you're writing something that's in your heart and soul. It's going to be those things with small orbs, and they may or may not also be low vibration. They don't need to be. Um, because it's a personal, immediate expression of your heart and soul. If the vibration is reaches into the 30s and higher, it becomes so fundamental. And when it gets into the 50s and 60s, like something that's within 64 vibration, it can lead to unusual or extraordinary results. So we're always looking at those tiny, tiny orbs because that's where the person becomes develop has potential to be extraordinary and when we look at the charts of people with some extraordinary talent you know like an olympic champion in sports or whatever it is something extraordinary has happened 
for good or bad, you know, it could be it could be evil and destructive and bad. That extreme behavior will come from aspects with very small orbs. They're picking up very high vibrations. That's the theory. It's very simple. Vibrational astrology is so simple and works so consistently. That's why it's very easy to use. We don't have a million rules to change the meaning. This is totally consistent. Now, let me make this a little concrete uh, to give an example and also to add this additional point. I do talk about this in other videos on harmonic charts. I'm just reinforcing the ideas here and, and, you know, just to make it clear and to give some more examples. On the left is my birth chart. In my birth chart is Mercury square Saturn. Mercury's at 28, Taurus 48. Saturn's at 29, Leo 19. Does that square aspect get expressed, obviously, in the world? Is it something that will be evident? The answer is yes. How do we know that? Because it's a square. Square aspects in the birth charts of very low vibration. They're obvious. But in vibrational astrology, Saturn doesn't mean frustration, doesn't mean bad. Saturn means getting to the point, getting to the essence. I'm always getting to the essence. It's obvious. It's clear. I communicate it. Now, does it dig deep? Does it dig deep? Does it affect the way I really think and feel and in my heart and soul? Yes or no? Yes, because the orb is so small. The orb is 19 plus 4, 23 minutes. So that's going to go down to, you know, above, it's less than half a degree. It's going to go above 32 vibration. It's digging in deep. Now, I'm going to read these notes at the bottom to make this clear. When the orb of that square aspect, for example, is small, as in my Mercury square Saturn, number one, the aspect picks up the intensity and the inner power of the higher octaves. That's the point I want to make clear. And I don't know if I've made that clear enough. I don't think I have in previous tutorial videos and articles, etc. It picks up the power, the intensity. It does not need anything else. Just the square by itself. It does not need a third planet. Because that orb is under a half a degree, it digs deep. And as you go up octaves, it's like a knife going into your heart and soul. It's digging deep. It becomes essentially important. It's not just something on the surface. So, you know, I, I've researched methodology and statistics and software development and developing clear rules. I'm a Mercury-Saturn guy. That's what Mercury-Saturn people do, Okay. Forget about Saturn necessarily being dry. Think about what the energy function is. Whether Saturn is dry and boring, <laughs> stilted and frustrated or not, is going to depend on a lot of things. And being in fixed signs is not enough to do it. According to vibrational astrology, what is going to determine the quality of that square is going to be what other vibrations does it pick up. So on the right side is my five vibration chart or more commonly called fifth harmonic chart, the Mercury square Saturn now has an orb five times bigger, because everything's multiplied by five, five times bigger than in the birth chart. So instead of a 20, whatever it was, minute or 23 minute orb, it's going to be 23 times five, what is that, about two and a half degrees. So Mercury at 24, Capricorn a one, tw Saturn at 26, Aries 34, yes, it's exactly two and a half degrees, two degrees 33 minutes. That orb is now five times bigger, but because the orb is so small in the birth chart, only 23 minutes, it stays within orb because squares get up to a four degree orb and it's a two and a half degree orb, so it's definitely there. The Mercury square Saturn is still there, still there in the five vibration chart. Now what happens is the sun gets involved at 23 Libra, and it makes a T-square. So what that means is that the Mercury-Saturn ties up with a third planet and therefore picks up 20 vibration. So here's the rule. The square in the natal chart by itself can only pick up 
octaves, octaves, doubling. So that one-fourth aspect, squares of one-fourth, is also two-eighths. It's also four-sixteenths. It's also eight-thirty-seconds. Don't worry about the numerator. We don't care that much about the numerator. But in addition to four, it's also eight, sixteen, thirty-two. It's picking up the intensity. It's digging deep, but it is not picking up 15 vibration or 20 vibration. It only picks up the octaves, the intensity. In order for that square, that Mercury square Saturn, to also have 15 vibration qualities, it would need to tie up with other planets in 15 vibration. And what's happening is it's tying up with the sun. The sun is always important for anything that manifests, that's in the light of day, that's clear, present reality. That Mercury square Saturn picks, like we call it, picks up the sun. The sun gets involved with the square to make a T-square. And therefore, the Mercury square Saturn picks up five vibrations. Wow, does that ever loosen up that square? Because five vibration is more flowy, more organic, more curious, more exploratory. It's, it's lighter, it's more childlike, more innocent, you might say. And with the sun there, it gives more of a childlike sense of, of like, how does that really work? Why is the sky blue? <laughs> Mommy, why is the sky blue? You know, it's like the forever child. You know, I'm, you know, it's like the, the kid who's got a microscope and he's got to look at all these little things under the microscope. And wow, how does that work? Why does that work? It's, it's, it's reinforced by, you might say, the moon and Gemini feeling in the birth chart is really amplified here. It's not so much the moon and Gemini as it is the sun getting involved with the Mercury-Saturn. So the point is this. Let me repeat it. Point number one. When the orb is small of a basic aspect, it does pick up the intensity of the higher vibrations. Uh, um, sorry, of the higher octaves. Only the octaves. In order to pick up the finer coloration, you might say, of like a five or a seven, you know, those have very powerful, unique qualities. In order to pick those up, it needs to tie up with an additional planet. So that's the rule, and I've got it down here on the bottom. Let me read it. When the orb is small, number one, the aspect picks up the intensity and inner power of the higher octaves, period, just by having a small orb. But two other higher vibrations, other than octaves, for example, a five-quality vibration for my Mercury square Saturn, gets picked up only by the third planet, in my case the sun, that adds that quality. And it changes the whole feeling of that Mercury square Saturn by having that additional overtone. It has that overtone of a five quality with the sun. And it's, and it's very clear. That, I mean, it's true. So that's how it works. I wanted to make that you know what? I'm already at 33 minutes. I'm going to break this video into two pieces uh, because this is going to end up being at least an hour long. So let's pick up with this again. I'm going to stop here. This is a great starting point. What is my next slide? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go. Still, I'm going to start talking about midpoint structure. So this is a perfect place to to take a uh, a stop, and we will have a part seven then um, of this series of videos on harmonic charts. Okay, my friends, we'll continue the rest of this in the next video. God bless. Namaste.